from 96 to 2000, every single game, I was there. 40 home games a year, and every playoff game, and most of the World Series games, really went into 2001 when they lost against Arizona. I sat behind Ruli Giuliani. Well, really, Giuliani had the first row. Second row was blank. Third row was his secret service, and I had the fourth row. I had four seats. Rudy would say, hello, Stu. I would say, hello, Mr. Mayor. So in other words, we were on a first name basis, and we watched the Yankees. And we loved the Yankees, and Rudy's favorite player was always Derek Jeter. So again, when this is his last year, it is very emotional for myself, as a bandwagon Yankee fan, for my family, for my company, and for the thousands of clients and friends I took to all these games. As you saw today, during the press conference, Derek Jeter gave you fucking nothing. He's not about to talk about his personal life, and if you saw, he said that was the only way he could survive in New York. The only way he could survive in New York is to give everybody nothing on a personal level. 12 months a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, he was thinking Yankee baseball, he was practicing Yankee baseball, he was talking Yankee baseball, he was playing Yankee baseball. That's how you get through two decades, two fucking decades without a blemish of his personal life spilling into three newspapers, four newspapers, three major networks, four networks, 30 networks nationwide. Nothing. Nada. Zip. Perfection. But you saw it has taken a toll on Derek. It's not fucking easy playing the game, and it's not fucking easy shutting yourself down emotionally when people are prying on a daily basis. Jeter, we're gonna fucking miss you.